So the green and neon tetras are just uh, got delivered. They are not doing too hot. We are putting them into this tank. We got about 500 of them in here and the other 500 at his facility, he didn't have a way to catch them all at the same time. So he brought me whatever he could because he was kind of in a rush to uh, go do something else. But uh, I do have some green neons in here. I left a couple um, to give them some some help to acclimatize the ones that are coming in, which are in this bag. So we will be dripping them for a few hours and then putting them into this tank. I'm also setting up a few more tanks in the fish room for them. So uh, you will see a lot more of these guys in the coming days and weeks. So this is the last hope attempt to save their lives because they are not doing too well. Uh, from being shipped. So here we are and uh, you will see them in a second. Clearly, I've done this before. Wow, it's really quiet in here. Do you guys like it this quiet? I kind of like, I think it's a little eerie. I, I, I don't like it this quiet. It's a little quiet, too quiet for my liking. Anyways, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. I'm actually sitting in front of my new green neon tetra tank. Actually, it is my green neon tetra tank, one of the breeding tanks that I had. These are the Parachiridon simulans scientific name will be down here um, and uh, they are an advanced fish they're probably more advanced than ultimate angels although they do require similar water parameters just because they are such a small fish they're a little bit more difficult to keep alive than an ultimate angel so if you have no experience keeping discus alive long term or other types of higher end more exotic or delicate species this is not a fish that you should attempt keeping. The only pe person I would recommend keeping these that doesn't have decades of experience is somebody that is actually good at keeping caradina shrimp. So if you are keeping caradina shrimp, so crystal reds, crystal blacks, Thai bees, Thai bee Michelins, King Kongs, fancy red tigers, any of those types, and you are good at keeping them alive long term and your shrimp are breeding, you can keep these guys in the same parameters as the crystal reds and crystal black shrimp. Now having said that, you have to have a lot of experience to keep these. As the video title suggests, we purchased over a thousand actually. My friend Jason imported like about 2,000 of these guys and uh, he was going to bring whatever was left in his tanks to me. Yesterday he ended up bringing this group which is about between 500 and 750. I think there was about 700 or 800 in there. I did suffer quite a bit of losses initially, this 25, and also about 75, another 50 today. So they're all here. I'll put some bureau footage of all the dead ones. And uh, I'm keeping those at, obviously as a record because the fish do not belong to me. Uh, I have not made a video for you guys in the last couple of days because this has been going on and it's been a little tough for me to make videos, but uh, when there's a lot of uh, death happening in my care, I, I kind of have a hard time dealing with it. So uh, we're gonna be looking at an in-depth care and maintenance video of these guys. I actually have a video recorded right now. I'm in the process of editing it, but uh, I'm gonna put this out right now because this is what how I got the fish. So I'll put some bureau footage of me bringing the fish and acclimatizing them. 
or about three to four hours dripping into the into the thing and then moving them into the tank so you'll see all of that throughout the video and uh we'll look at them in detail in the next video which is going to be coming out right after there will be also footage of their natural habitat courtesy of heiko blair thank you so much so uh, i just asked him permission to use some of his footage off of his uh, facebook page that he posted recently of his last expedition to the amazon and uh, he was gracious enough to say yes and uh, so I'm gonna uh, put some of that footage in the in the next video for you guys so you can see what the natural habitat they come from looks like. They do require really low pH. Uh, the literature suggests between three and 6.5. Uh, basically a pH of three is essentially vinegar. Uh, vinegar has a pH of between 2.8 and three. So uh, if you were to let's say put these guys in a bottle of vinegar, they would be happy, okay? So now having said that, you do not want to keep them in a tank that's like above 6.5 pH. There's a popular video on YouTube actually that talks about how they keep them at 8.0 pH. Uh, I mean, you can keep koi fish in salt water for a couple of days or even a month. Does not mean that the animal is uh, doing well or osmoregulating properly. So you don't want to really push that type of limits on these type of fish or any fish for that matter. If you are going to keep a fish, keep it in the type of water that you are intent, it is intended to live in. For example, if you are keeping saltwater fish, keep them in salt water. If you are keeping fish that live in acidic water, keep them in acidic water. And if you cannot make acidic water or do not know how to maintain an acidic water environment long term, do not keep fish that live in acidic water. So having said that, I am going to say do not buy this fish unless you are an experienced and advanced fish keeper. These fish are for sale. We will not be selling them for another few weeks until they are more stable. Uh, until then, they will be staying in my care and I'm pretty sure Jason will be bringing the rest in the next couple of days. So you will see that and you will see an advanced care and maintenance video of all the details you need to know about how to take care of these guys long term and to become quite successful. And there are things that an average fish keeper can do to maintain this type of environment with some simple tricks so which we will be looking at that in the upcoming video so subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video as well as many other videos like this get uploaded so in today's video we're just going to be looking at me dumping the fish into the tank so you'll hear the uh me talking in the background in some of them there will be a lot of uh, noise and stuff bear with me and uh, watch till the end because you are not going to want to miss some of the b-roll footage that is going to be coming up throughout the video so these ones are doing great. This is the first bag. There are some DOAs obviously. Um, but there is another bag like this at his house which uh, we will be getting in a couple of days. And uh, so depending on how good these do, I might get the rest uh, or he might keep them. Just because we don't want to take a chance. These guys are very delicate and it's been a really tough uh, journey for them. And uh, they are not doing as good as expected so far. So that's why they are here. And they are going into this nice planted tank with uh, tropical substrate and uh, already green neon tetras in it. Uh, the temperature in this tank is about 80 degrees. It's 77.7 .7 in here, so I'm going to have to drip acclimate them. Uh, the pH, I brought it up in here to about 6.7 or 6.8. And it is dropping steadily, so now it's about 6.7 right now. But uh, once these guys do get drip, drip acclimated and moved into the tank, the substrate will bring the pH down to about 5.5 or the next week, which should help them uh, with their bodily functions and also to get them back to normal health. So stay tuned and uh, watch till the end because this is going to be a fun video. I'm actually having a really fun time right now, but I'm seriously stressed. Like, it's a different type of stress, you know, when this amount of animals are in charge, when you're in charge of this amount of lives, you have to really take your job very seriously, and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I just want to get this on film for you guys. The pH in here is about 6.5 right now. It is steadily dropping. Um, these guys come from very acidic water. I spoke with uh, the fish collecting master, Heiko, yesterday and also watch some of his videos where he finds these guys and uh, and my friend has them right now in a pH of a little over 7 so we are going to get them into this tank which is uh, under 6.5 or around 6.5 and uh, hopefully that should help them plus the tannins to get them back to normal health so fingers crossed let's drip them in there see the tank I actually have my breeding group in, in the other side, 
the pH in there is about 4, 4.5. So I'll, I'll test that for you on camera and show you guys in a second. We are doing a drip acclimation. I'm doing a little bit of a faster drip. Um, initially, just to get the pH below 7. Right now it's about 7.2. And uh, once the pH starts going close to 7, I'll, I'll reduce the drip. Actually, let me reduce the drip right now. It's too fast. So that's the kind of drip I want to have right now. Uh, the temp, the pH is still 7.2 in the in the bag, and the tank pH is 6.55, and uh, so this drip, or about three hours, should bring the both tank and bag parameters to the same. I am gonna move with the water into this tank. I'm not gonna try to catch them or plop and drop or any of that stuff. I'm not trying to stress these fish any more than they are stressed right now. And uh, after making this little video clip right now, within the next 30 seconds, I'm going to turn off these lights. So we will see them in a few hours. Stay tuned. All right, the audio is gonna be really shit because I'm not gonna turn off my filters or anything right now. I'm just dealing with this, but I just wanna get this on film, so. There are some dead ones. You will see the occasional dead fish, but most are doing really well. I'm gonna monitor them in here for a second. I don't know if you can see on the camera right now, but there are like about seven or eight I put in already, and they have joined the three or four fish. They're right there. That I had in here before so there were some adults in here and they joined the group and as soon as they joined the group they started acting much better and doing a lot better so I'm fully confident that these guys are gonna do great once they go in the tank so let's get them out of this bag without too much of a hassle Clearly, I've done this before. We are going to save this bag. Recycle friends. Recycling is good for the environment and for your wallet. That's a good bag. That's a lot more than what I got last time. It's about five times more. Thank you so much everybody that watched the video till the end. You guys are all awesome. Subscribe down below and hit that notification so you get updated when the advanced care and maintenance video for these guys as well as many other videos like that get uploaded. I am actually in the process of picking up the Autumn Angels. 
Some of them have uh, passed away from bacterial infections and fungal infections, but some are doing well. So the, the ones that are doing well, uh, he is going to monitor them. And uh, depending on how things are going, uh, I might end up getting some of the ones that are not doing too well. Or I might actually end up waiting for another few weeks if they are doing well and then pick them up once they are past quarantine, which is when I like to actually pick up fish. There will be a video about how I set up black water and all that coming up and uh, how I transition fish. So as the fish come in, I will be making those videos. So subscribe and if you haven't, hit that notification icon so you get updated because a lot of you guys have subscribed, about 50% of you. So the rest of you, the other 55% that haven't subscribed, subscribe and the the people that haven't hit all notifications, hit the notification icon so you get updated when the entire video series as well as individual daily videos like this get uploaded. As always, thank you so much for your love and support. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you.